Good morning and welcome to St Thomas Online once again as we gather on this last Sunday in the Easter period and also the last Sunday in our series on 1 Peter. Uh, in this series at the end here, he wraps it up by exploring the theme of living humbly, which is quite interesting given that in the ancient world, humility was not regarded a virtue at all, quite the opposite. And so this morning we come to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, to bow down before him, his glory proclaim. That is our opening hymn as we gather together in praise, honour, worship and humbly bowing before our Lord. Let us sing. And incense of holiness Bring and adore him The Lord is his name Lo, at his feet lay your burdens of carefulness I on his heart he will bear it for you Comfort for sorrow and answer your prayerfulness, guiding your steps in the way that's for you. Fear not to enter his courts in the slenderness of the poor wealth who would reckon to earn. Truth in its beauty are the offerings to bring to his throne. These are we bring them in trembling and fearfulness. He will accept for the name that is dear. Mornings of joy give for evenings of tearfulness. Trust for our trembling and hope for our fear. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. Call of obedience and incense of holiness. Bring and adore him, the Lord is his name. Sentence of scripture for today. Go and make disciples of all nations, Jesus commands. I am with you always to the close of the age. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Christ is risen, alleluia. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed, indeed. Alleluia. alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, God to, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets, secrets are hidden, cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for today, let us pray. God of majesty, you led the Messiah through suffering into risen life and took him up into the glory of heaven. Clothe us with the power promised from on high and send us forth to the ends of the earth as heralds of repentance and witnesses of Jesus Christ, the firstborn from the dead, who lives with you now and always in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. Now have our Bible readings. First reading is taken from First Peter, reading chapter 5. To the elders among you, I appear, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing. God wants you to be not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. With the help of Silas, whom I regard as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly, encouraging you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. She who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you her greetings, and so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 17, beginning at verse 1. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. After Jesus had said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your son may glorify you. You granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. All glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. We're going to sing a new hymn, and this is thanks to uh, the people at Emu Music Australia who have made this available uh, for churches to sing during this lockdown period. The song is This Life I Live, 
and being online, at least with the, on the computer, that as you learn a new song, you can listen to it and can uh, replay it uh, as you learn it. So take advantage of the technology to do so. Uh, let us sing. We do thank you that we are yours in Christ and pray that as we explore your word together that you may open our hearts and minds to understand and to grow in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as I said a little earlier, today we come to the last in our series exploring the first letter of Peter. The central theme of our passage today is found in verses 5 and 6 of chapter 5. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God oppose, opposes the proud, but shows favour to the hum, humble and oppressed. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. There is a re repetition to clothe yourselves with humility and to humble yourselves with the promise that God shows favour to the humble and oppressed and will lift them up. Three references to humility in two verses. So what does humility mean? According to an online dictionary, it is the modest opinion or estimate of one's own importance or rank. The opposite of humility is pride, hence Peter's paraphrase of Psalm 18 verse 27. God opposes the proud, but shows favour 
to the humble and oppressed. In the Christian context, pride is what puts ourselves in the place of God. It was pride that brought about Satan's downfall, and it is pride that is at the root of sin. C.S. Lewis wrote, If anyone would like to acquire humility, I can, I think, tell him the first step. The first step is to realise that one is proud, and a biggish step too. At least nothing whatever can be done before it. If you think you are not conceited, it means you are very conceited indeed. In contrast, humility comprises the characteristics, the behaviours and attitudes of submitting to and depending on God, respecting and honouring legitimate authority, recognising virtues and talents that others possess, particularly those that surpass one's own and give due honour to them, recognising the limits of one's own talents, ability or authority and not reaching for what is beyond one's grasp. C.S. Lewis sums it up well, I think, in his more famous quote, Humility is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. When it comes to understanding humility today, who better to turn to than the Australian theologian, author and scholar, the Reverend Dr John Dixon, who has written an entire book on the subject of humility. The central theme of Humilitas may seem a little counterintuitive. How on earth can you be truly great and truly humble at the same time? But it really depends how you define humility. Humility is not being a doormat for others, uh, nor is it um, laying down your ambitions and hiding your strengths. Humility is the noble ability to hold your power, whatever that is, uh, for the good of others, not just personal gain. And it's my thesis that some of the greatest leaders throughout history have had this quality of being able to hold their power, whether military, financial, intellectual, moral, for the good of others, not just personal gain. The humble leader is now, I think, uh, beginning to be seen even in the business community, uh, in military leadership, they've started to see that humility is a key ingredient for leadership. After all, it's the humble leader who inspires those beneath them. Because if you are approachable, open to your own mistakes and critique from others, you are going to be the kind of leader that attracts others. I think also that humility is just common sense because not all of us, in fact, none of us can be an expert at everything. In fact, the true expert ought to know this better than anyone because the more you know about a particular discipline, whether it's uh, academic mathematics or financial markets or the movement of macroeconomics or whatever it is, the more you know about that topic, the more you realize how much there must be to know about all the other topics you're not an expert in. So the true expert has even better reason to be humble. And it's applying this humility to our love relationships, to our leadership, to our engagement with the wider community that I think is the key to true greatness. So in his book, Dixon defines humility as the noble choice to forego your status, deploy your resources or use your influence for the good of others before yourself, such that a humble person is marked by a willingness to hold power in service of others. By this definition, you can see that humility starts from a position of dignity, strength, and a healthy sense of our own worth and abilities as a child of God. Dixon goes on to argue that humility is important for leadership because humility is persuasive. Humility unlocks the door to respected and influential power. On page 69, he writes, We are more attracted to the great who are humble than to the great who know it and want everyone else to know it as well. I think it's true that we tend to uh, trust a humble person 
more than a proud person to act in our best interests, when you agree. Humility is to be evident in all of our lives, especially in the lives of our leaders. That is what Peter is encouraging in our passage today. He writes, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. That exhortation concludes a word that he has written to leaders in the church in the opening five verses, and then also begins a word that he writes to all believers in the following verses. So Peter first addresses the leaders of the church in verses one to five. To the leaders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble and oppressed. First of all, leaders are to be shepherds. This is a metaphor rich with biblical imagery in both the Old and New Testaments. In Psalm 23, the Lord is our shepherd, providing our needs, protection and guidance. In Ezekiel 34, we have images of God as shepherd and of his appointed shepherd leaders who are to uh, provide for the needs of those under their care, to protect them and guide them. In Luke 15, Jesus is the shepherd who seeks the lost sheep. With John 10 painting the picture of what it means for Jesus to be the good shepherd, laying down his life for the sheep. In Jesus, we have the truly humble shepherd leader. Then at the end of John's gospel, Peter is commissioned by the Lord to care for and feed the Lord's sheep. Now Peter reminds other Christian leaders that they too are to be shepherds of God's people. They are to exercise godly, humble, caring oversight that serves the need of the people of God not feeding themselves for the benefits of leadership, whether that be prestige, financial gain or promotion. Secondly, these leaders are to be examples. They are to be examples of the chief, chief shepherd who doesn't lord it over others, who doesn't need to shout or bully or coerce. Jesus came not to be served, but to serve as a servant leader. Christian leaders, likewise, are to serve those in their care. Peter now makes a transition to speak to all in the church. From verses 5 and 6, In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favour to the humble and oppressed. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Humility is something that we are to be clothed in. It is to embrace our whole person and is to be shown in our relationship with others. As Peter writes, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Humility is social. More about how we respond to and relate and treat others than what we think about ourselves. It is best revealed in how one treats those with less power. For those under the authority of shepherds, it is shown in how one respects and honours that authority. But what Peter has written so far isn't easy. Life is full of struggles. Leaders are not always good shepherds. Sheep aren't always respectful. As we saw last week, Peter is writing to Christians in the midst of suffering and persecution. So he now turns to deal with the issue of anxiety. Verse 7, 
Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. This verse has been a great comfort to many. It presumes that anxiety is a fact of life. Jesus himself experienced incredible anxiety in the Garden of Gethsemane before going to the cross. Depending on our personalities, some experience anxiety more than others. This verse doesn't call us to ignore the anxiety, but to cast it or to throw it on the Lord because he cares about you and he wants to take that load from you. He wants you to give him all of your anxieties, however small or large or even how embarrassing they might seem to you. He cares about everything that affects you and he is there for you. Finally, Peter identifies what lies behind the suffering of God's people and the anxieties they carry. In verses 8 to 11, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your fellow believers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. If we want to deal with a problem, it's important to know what the real cause is. Peter warns us that there is a real enemy who is like a roaring lion ready to devour someone. He alerts us to the seriousness of the Christian life and to the reason why there is suffering and persecution in our world. There is an enemy using people and institutions for his own purposes. But Peter reminds us in verse 11 that real power belongs to God. God's power is eternal. And in verse 10 we have the promise that despite any sufferings now, God will restore you and make you strong firm and steadfast. Because of that, we are able to resist the devil and stand firm in the faith, to resist and to persist. Whatever we face, in life or in death, we have a living hope in the one who has suffered, died and rose again to save us, who will restore, support, strengthen and establish us now and in glory with him forever. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you. We will respond to that passage by singing what's known as a servant song, as in humility we seek to serve one another. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let us sing. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey and companions on the road. We are here to help each other.
I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we sing this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Now turn to a time of prayer. Let us pray for all people and for God's church throughout the world. <clears throat> Praise to you, ascended Jesus, for you rule the world with righteousness. Hear our prayers for the peoples of all nations. Grant wisdom and integrity to all who govern, mercy and judgment to those who administer the law. Teach your people how to live in harmony and fill us with your truth that we may be your witnesses in the world. We pray for areas of your world affected by conflict and by natural disasters such as disease, drought, famine, fire and storms. We pray for the people in India and Bangladesh affected by Cyclone Amphan on Wednesday. We pray for them as they seek to repair the storm damage and with the restraints that the COVID-19 brings. We pray for them as they mourn the loss of those who died in the tragedy. We also pray for the people of Warren Ponds in our own state who are also coping with damage from storms. We pray for our world as COVID-19 continues to rampage through the nations. We pray for protection for those working in hospitals and care facilities and for inspiration for those working on treatments and vaccines. As we come out of isolation in Australia, help us to be sensible and patient and to consider others as well as ourselves. Jesus Christ, ascended and glorified, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
Praise to you, ascended Jesus, for you make known to us the true and living God. Hear our prayers for your church worldwide. Grant humility and vision to all who lead your church. Fellowship to all that eat at your table. Unite Christians everywhere in the bond of your love and fill us with your power that we may be your witnesses in all the world. We pray for the Anglican Church in Australia, for our Archbishop Philip Freer and the Assistant Bishops, Geneve, Brad, Paul and Kate. And for those on our Deanery Cycle of Prayer, Stephen Webster at St Michael's North Melbourne, Ron Johnson at Holy Trinity Pasco Vale in Oak Park, Michael Danaher and Linda Crosley at St Aidan Strathmore, and Richard Murray at St George's Travancore. We pray for St Thomas's Church that we may be strong and firm in our faith so that God may be praised. May we serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. We ask that you will continue to bless Vanessa as she shepherds your flock here at St Thomas's, willingly and with eagerness and living as an example before us. We pray for strength and energy as she carries out her role as Archdeacon of Essendon. Jesus Christ, ascended and glorified, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Praise to you, ascended Jesus, for you welcome the marginalised and provide for the needy. Hear our prayers for all with whom we share our lives. Grant acceptance to all who are unpopular and unloved. Care to the neglected and lonely, and a voice to those who are never heard. Enlighten our hearts with your spirit of generosity, that we may be a caring and compassionate community and live together in love and concern for one another. Teach your people to live in true community and fill us with your love that we may be your witnesses in all the world. Jesus Christ, ascended and glorified, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Praise to you, ascended Jesus, for you heal the sick and look with compassion on those who are in need. Hear our prayers for all who suffer. Grant hope to those in despair, consolation to those who grieve, relief to those in pain, and strength and patience for those who care for them. Teach your people to share each other's sorrows and fill us with your compassion that we may be your witnesses in all the world. We pray for those who we know personally who are in special need of your love and care at this time and name them now in our hearts. We pray for Paul as he drives to Sydney to see his mother this weekend. Isabel has been admitted to hospital after a bad reaction to her chemotherapy. We continue to pray for Isabel and for the whole family as they deal with her illness. Jesus Christ, ascended and glorified, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Praise to you, ascended Jesus, for you call us to eternal glory. Hear our prayers as we remember your faithful servants of every age and seek to follow their example. Fill us with your righteousness that we may be your witnesses in all the world and when our work on earth is done, with all your saints, may we enter life, sorry, may we enter eternal life and receive the crown of glory. Jesus Christ, ascended and glorified, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. We ask these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily, daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has entered heaven itself, there to appear before God on our behalf. Let us therefore draw near in full assurance of faith 
and confess our sins before the God of grace. Merciful Merciful God, God, our our maker maker and our judge, we have have sinned sinned against you in thought, word word and deed, and in what we have have failed to do. We We have have not loved loved you with our whole heart. We We have have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen Strengthen us to love and obey obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We come to our next hymn again picking up the theme of uh, servant, servanthood and humility as we explore all that our servant king has done for us. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For thanks and praise, glory and honour be yours at all times and in every place. Holy and loving Father, true and living God. We praise you that through your eternal word, you brought the universe into being and made us in your image. You have given this earth for us to care for and delight in, and with its bounty you preserve our life. 
We thank you that you bound yourself to the human race with the promises of a gracious covenant and called us to serve you in love and peace. Above all, we give thanks for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Born as one of us, he lived our common life and offered his life to you in perfect obedience and trust. By his death, he delivered us from sin, brought us new life, and reconciled us to you and to one another. You have highly exalted him and given him the name which is above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with apostles and prophets, with holy men and women of every age, we proclaim your great and glorious name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that we who eat and drink them in obedience to our Saviour Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may be partakers of his body and blood and be made one with him and with each other in peace and love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. As we eat and drink this holy sacrament, renew us in your spirit, that we may be united in the body of your Son and serve you as a royal priesthood in the joy of your eternal kingdom. Receive our praises, Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of never-ending praise, Blessing, Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. For we all share in the one bread. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Take and eat in remembrance that Christ died for us and be thankful. Drink in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for us and be thankful. Let us pray. God of glory, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into the world to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Strengthen us who share in this meal to continue his mission by living the good news we proclaim. Father, we offer, offer ourselves, ourselves to you as, as a living, living sacrifice, sacrifice through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Send, send us out in the power of your spirit, spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. 
On Thursday, we began our program of Thy Kingdom Come, praying where each of us are encouraged to pray for five uh, friends or members of our family uh, to come to know Jesus. And so we commence with morning prayer on Thursday. And uh, if you had forgotten about it, um, it's not too late to begin doing that. So praying each day from now until Pentecost, that's next Sunday, uh, for five people in particular, naming them each day before the Lord that uh, he might, by his grace, bring them to know his Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then following Pentecost next week, it will be Trinity Sunday, and then we begin our series on Genesis 1 to 11, looking at how everything began and the foundation of faith. Come to the blessing. Christ, our exalted King, pour upon you abundant gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, beloved, serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.